Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Mer. As always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to entitle this video. And the purpose of this video is because everybody's a, a title into everybody's entitled to their opinion. Nothing wrong with that. I just don't want anybody coming to my channel and giving wrong information, you know, because people read comments and uh, they walk away believing things that have been posted and it's absolutely not true. Now, again, you're entitled to your opinion. You can put your opinion down here all day long. I, I welcome that. But do your research before you leave a comment that's not true. Because I just did a video. Actually, it's a repost. I did a video of uh, Eddie Hazel's plan. And actually, it was a repost. I think I posted that in 2016. And I thought it was a good idea for my newer viewers that were not here before 2016 to repost this. So I did. And it basically talks about Eddie Hazel. You know, I am by no means an expert on Eddie Hazel. You know, I grew up on Parliament more so than Funkadelics. But I did a little research. I've heard him play on recordings, and he was just, he was a genius. And, you know, one would ask, well, why didn't he become as big as Hendrix? And my opinion in that video, and I do a recap of that video, not about to redo it again here. My opinion is, or theory is, because uh, I worked with some guys years ago in uh, rappers, and they had this in their, one of their songs, and I'll never forget it. He said, in order to be successful, you got to be one of three things, first, best, or different. And then... Eddie Hazel's case, he was not first. Jimmy was first. So, you know, it's like two kings cannot share the same stage at the same time. The reason why Rupert Holmes, which is one of my all-time favorite songwriters, was not big as Barry Manilow, because he came out around the time Barry Manilow did. And, and here's, a, a, I guess, something to substantiate that, because in Rupert Holmes' liner of his greatest hits in the liner sleeve, uh, it said this to one of the greatest songwriters ever, signed Barry Manilow. So even Barry Manilow was giving him the nod to say, "Yeah, you, you, you just good, but I'm, st I'm staring sh sharing this stage right now. Or should I say, I'm on the stage, and we can't have two kings on the stage at once. So that's what happened. And it's the same thing with uh, Eddie Hazel. You know, Eddie Hazel could go. You know, Maggie Brain was a, was a classic. So. And I did a comparison of, uh, you know, we all know that Prince patterned his style behind Jimi Hendrix, Purple Rain, the way that he physically plays, the way he technically plays. You know, he's on stage licking the guitar, stroking it like a junior tailor. When 15 years earlier, Jimmy was doing the same thing. Jimmy was first. So it's, it's, it's just obvious, okay, uh, this man patterned his style behind the great. And the reason why Prince was successful in doing it because Prince re brought it back a generation later. Because, again, the reason why G uh, Eddie wasn't as big as Jimmy because they were in the same era. But, you know, Prince uh, kind of repackaged that style from the 60s, Jimmy playing, and repackaged it. And in the late 70s, he did it. You know, so that's why he, one of the reasons why he was successful in pulling that off, you know. But you can look at, you know, the, the, the footage of uh, some of their performances, like, He's kind of being trying to be a carbon copy, you know, and that's not a big thing. I'm not knocking that, you know, because Prince was a bad, bad dude. You know, my favorite song of Prince was Bambi. I think that's when everybody realized he was a badass on guitar. It's like, whoa, this guy can, man, you know, you know, he, he, he went there. You know, he took it there. And each time that I've seen Prince perform that song, he doesn't do it the same. I mean, you actually... It's extremely different. It's not just a uh, slight variation because the very last uh, time I seen him do it in concert, he tore it off. I was like, whoa, I didn't think it could get better than it got on the record, but uh, Prince was, he was a badass, you know? So I'm going to read this comment. And again, this is not to put anybody on blast. It's not to go into, uh, I'm writing you wrong, none of that. It's just that some of this information is not accurate. And like I said, on my channel, I kind of like my comments to be accurate. But it still is somewhere else. Again, I stress, you're entitled to your opinion. Your opinion, you can post that all day long down there, you know. But uh, it says, Prince and Jimmy had different styles. Okay. People compare the two because they're black. No. Got nothing to do with your color. 
You know, it has nothing to do with the pigment of their skin. Why one they say one uh, has the same style as the other. You know, but again, that's an opinion, but it's not accurate. Prince had a soulful tone to his guitar playing, whereas Jimmy had a classic classic rock style. Two different people, two different eras. You don't expect Jim, uh, Prince to come up on stage with just two other guys, a power trio like Jimmy did, and do Jimmy. You know, this was the late 70s when Prince came out, so he was doing his thing according to the time and era that he was doing his thing, you know? Oh, let's see. Classic styles. Listen to Prince playing Foxy Lady. It sounds very different compared to Jimmy. I love this statement because, I mean, I make this statement till my tongue get dry on my channel. No two people play the same. You don't expect Prince to sound exactly like Jimmy playing Foxy Lady. You know, so that's an indication from this statement and this comment is, this is just a love of music. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But this guy's not a musician. He's not a guitar player, you know. So it's interesting when people, again, it's, you're entitled to your opinion. But, you know, this is wrong. It's, it's not true. And, again, it's not me trying to stump on anybody. You're wrong and I'm right because I'm a musician. I've been uh, playing professionally for 27th, almost 30 years, you know. It's not about that. It's just this is not accurate information. And I don't want my young viewers reading this and believing this because this is not true. You know, it's not true. Like I said, even, let's just take Jimmy for the example. Even, and he's an, ex, I'm going to use an example. And this, this applies to just about everybody that's a musician. You don't play your own stuff the same. You know, uh, if you follow footage of your artist playing his song, one of his songs, and then 20 years later he's playing it, he's not going to play it exactly like he did 20 years ago. For several reasons. One, they get bored with the same arrangement. Two, you expound on your original creation. I do that all the time with my songs. I go back, I'm like, I should have worded it this way, the melody. Or I should have put in a piano here instead of a guitar. You know, it never stops. You know, you have to kind of shut the door because if you don't, you be going back and forth with the same one song for 40 years. I'm, I'm going to do a 14 version of it. You have to shut it down and move on. Shut it down and move on, you know. And that's what we do. But I just thought I would post this video. Because again, and I stress this. This is not, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. But when your opinion is not accurate, not even close, you, know, you, you got to get called out. And not get called out in a negative way. Because that's what I'm really trying to stress here. I'm not trying to be negative with this comment or, or video. I'm just trying to uh, set the record straight. So when the young, inspiring guitar players follow my channel and read the comments, they walk away with accurate information instead of just someone's opinion. And that opinion is not accurate. It's not even close. You know? So that's all I'm doing here. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching.